So what's up guys, it's EpiJK and I'm here with another episode of the Road to Glory series in FIFA 17 Ultimate Team. So it's episode 22 and last episode we dealt with the Griezmann coming back into form and this episode is going to be a bit more about the Griezmann, uh, about his future in our club, whether we are uh, getting ready to sell him or trying to keep him and it's, it's a lot of a dilemma I had to face while I was playing this uh, clips. So on the background you're going to be seeing myself getting through the Division 4 I think uh, and this episode you're gonna see the remaining games from Division 4 and and seeing through where we finish in the Division 4 we'll be moving into the next game so it's like uh, 7 or 8 games is you're gonna see in this episode. So speaking about the team up front uh, so I have been looking for a replacement for Olivier Giroud as I was uh, speaking in the last episode and I had Harry Kane, I bought Harry Kane uh, to complete the squad building challenge for Eden Hazard and I was uh, putting him in the bench so I subbed him on in a couple of games and he was really good. Now Harry Kane is a very similar striker compared to Olivier Giroud but he's got bit more pace on him, bit more uh, like uh, he's, he's got better shooting than him and he's got better weak foot and his agility and balance and dribbling stuff is very good compared to Olivier Giroud so my apt replacement for Olivier Giroud is um, Harry Kane and of course it loses Anton Griezmann the much needed chemistry so to alter with that I have put in the center mid I have bought in Morgan Schneiderlin to replace Gareth Barry so Morgan Schneiderlin is a very good defensive minded midfielder he's got like 66 pace which is a dead absolute uh, great for a midfielder where in midfield you don't need very good pace on this year so he's got very good defensive stats like 82 and 83 I don't believe, uh, remember the exact stats but he's very similar to Gareth Barry and he, he, he's got a very good long shot in him and that has got a couple of good goals with Morgan Schneiderlin from outside the box and he is a very good defensive minded midfielder and he goes for around like 1000 coins, 82 rated CDM from France so he gives a French link to him and when I put buy and put Koke on the left center mid and now uh, Anton Griezmann regains his maximum chemistry that he can get is uh, 7 so he gets 7 chemistry now so that's what a couple of things I, deci I decided to do and I bought it and and it seems really well and Koke for was around like 4,000 to 3,500 coins. He was const uh, constantly altering his price because of the squad building challenges. Uh, because of some squad building challenges, and the only player who is out of chemistry on the team is um, Pepe, who is on like eight chemistry, I believe, because he doesn't have the uh, very good link for in uh, either from left back or from left center mid. So once we buy a Marcelo, the team would be on perfect chemistry, man. So that's the changes that needs to be imminent and some of the goals I scored, you might have seen a couple of goals. It was really EA 8's have turned against me and I was really struggling in, uh, 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 not struggling in terms of gameplay. I was scoring some very good goals like I mean I have to work for my goals. I was uh, creating chances here and there and to get uh, uh, the finishing touch I had to work my opposition out of play. But my opposition did find very easy to score against me because of some scrappy touches from my uh, goalkeeper and my defend, uh, defenders inside my box. Which was really worrying me now. It was losing a couple of good games here where I could have uh, easily won and gained promotion. So speaking of our progress in the Division 4, we couldn't uh, manage to get a very good run in Division 4 and get promoted. Because I started the game, I started the season very badly. Like I was in five games in, I just got like four points. So that's not a very good form. Actually, it's a relegation form. But somehow I managed to gain uh, uh, to avoid relegation and hold the division. So somehow I managed to do that, and we do have another try at division four. So moving away from the topic and speaking about Antoine Griezmann, Antoine Griezmann. He's, he's tremendous. He's when he scores like on a free running note, he's so good to watch and so good to use. And of course, he's an 88 rated player. So his market value currently, at the time of recording and not at the time of this video going live, is around like 250,000 coins because the before the Black Friday and market crash. And this is the time that uh, that uh, still uh, player of the month uh, Eden Hazard was still in packs. And there were like six or five days left on him, and I was in a very tempting mood because uh, to complete that challenge, it, it's like 600k to 700k. But initially, it was 700k, but uh, after a couple of days, the price did get reduced to around like uh, 
uh, 500,000 coins. So in practical, I need like 500,000 coins. And if I can wipe out my club entirely, uh, selling those uh, stuff which do have value, I can get around like 200,000 coins. And selling Antoine Griezmann and other good uh, players in my team, like Wayne Rooney is up like 20,000 coins. And if I sell every, every good players on my team, and I could get around like 300,000 coins. So in practical, we got like 500,000 coins and like 20,000 coins from the match earnings and stuff would put us around like 550,000 coins, making ourselves just enough, having just enough to complete the Eden Hazard challenge. And of course, we could get the packs from them. And of course, I'm waiting for the market crash to come and we could save ourselves like 70 to 80,000 coins. So I was waiting for them and I, I, I'm not really yet sure whether getting uh, letting uh, Griezmann go is a good idea. And if we had to sell Griezmann we, uh, and get uh, Eden Hazard, the player of the month, uh, player of the month, we would be moving into a block, a Barclays Premier League team. And of course, we had to get rid of Pepe in the squad building challenge as well. So it's all in the options. I'm currently weighing my options and trying to see which is the profitable one and which one is not. So these squad building challenges, I've been recently taking a look at them. And in the last 30 or 40 uh, days, we have been dropping the squad building challenges like bombshells there. They dropped like four, or three or four leagues in the last 40 days and to complete. And every league uh, kind of needs like 18 to 20 sets to complete. So it's a, uh, it's a new method for purifying the market, I think, from EA. They, they've done a very good job, but it sometimes the players who uh, invest a lot on FIFA points can afford these uh, squad building challenges easily. And the players like uh, who try to do on a road to glory basis is is getting hard for me to keep up with the pace that EA were dropping the squad building challenges. And it's a very uh, hard task to to keep up as well because uh, some for someone who doesn't have enough time to spend on FIFA 17 apart from the YouTubers and the kids. So uh, me going to college and all kind of stuff that keeps me uh, keeps my time at FIFA 17 very limited. And it's been a very hard experience because I do want to get into playing FIFA 17 more and more. I want to invest my time in the, in the transfer market in FIFA 17 and get uh, millions of profit. I know the ideas, but I can't, I can't afford time to execute them. And I'm not playing enough games because due to my limited time and I can't get into the foot champions because of that reason as well. I can't just put enough time to get into this. Uh, Getting to the full benefit of this uh, gameplay uh, of this game, it's a wonderful game, no doubt in that. But uh, there are certain uh, aspects that limit certain people from enjoying this game on an entire basis. So that's all what I wanted to discuss in this video, guys. And next episode is going to be a bit more frustrated one. And I will see you guys in the next episode soon.